what an honor and a privilege it is to be able to stand in God's holy temple and proclaim God's holy word. I do on this Sunday afternoon, we will be as thin as my hairline. <laughs> Amen. Because folks had to work. Mama's sick. And uh, we just got folks who are out of town. So but we got to do what God asked us to do. Or we have a responsibility unto the Lord mm -hmm. to be ready in season and out of season. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, there is a word from the Lord this afternoon. But I'm going to take you to two um, passages. So bookmark Exodus 3 and 13. And bookmark um, Matthew 6, 13. Amen. So Exodus 6 and 13 be our first reading. I'm reading for the Amplified Version, so my translation is a little different from yours, but just bear with me for I promise you to do the Bible, no harm, no harm. It reads, Then Moses said to God, Behold, when I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me, and they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent you. And over to Matthew 16. And, 13. and it reads now when Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi he asked his disciples who do people say that the son of man is and they answered some say John the Baptist others Elijah and still others Jeremiah or just one of the prophets he said to them but who do you say that I am Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed, the Son of the living God. Then Jesus answered him, Blessed are thou, Simon, son of Barjona, because flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will have been bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will have been loosed in heaven. Amen. Amen. Just about 13 minutes and 45 seconds. I want to ask this question here. What do you know about my Jesus? Amen. What do you know about my Jesus? It is going to come at some time in our Christian life that we're going to have to give an account of who Jesus Christ truly is in our lives. Yes. Um, we're going to have an opportunity that it's not going to matter how, how uh, nice of a dress you wear and you carry your Bible underneath your arm and a cross around your neck. You're going to have to be able to know and declare who Jesus is for yourself. You ain't going to be able to bank on what your mama told you about him. You ain't going to be able to bank on what the what Kirk Franklin might have said about him. You're going to have to know about Jesus all for yourself. And you're going to be have, you're going to have to be able to tell somebody just who Christ is. And the reason why Christ asked the question of, of, of these disciples, what do men say, who do men say that I am? Because he wants to know when it comes down to it, can you tell somebody? Who Jesus Christ is. Well, well. You ain't going to be able uh, to tell them uh, what you heard about him. Yeah. 
You would have to be able to tell them what you know about him. And it's a difference between what I've heard about him and what I know about him. Because what I know about him is because he's taking me through some obstacles and over some mountains and through some valleys. And because of the experience that I've had with him, I've been able to see God and see God all for myself. It's important uh, when we begin to evaluate our relationship with Christ mm -hmm. that we evaluate it based on how God has shown himself favorable unto us. And I can't speak for nobody but my own self, but I can truly say that God has shown me favor yeah. all the days yeah. Of my life. He's exposed himself to me as someone who is accreditable, someone who I can depend on, someone who's trustworthy, someone who's there for me through the thick and the thin, and he's shown himself faithful to me. And that's the God that I serve. Walk with me through this text. We find Moses being called by God coming to this burning bush to see why this bush is burning but yet is not being consumed. Yeah. He was intrigued by the fact that there was a, a occurrence happening that was truly unexplainable. And that was always our incidents when we first met Christ. There was something that was unexplainable happening that I had to draw myself nearer unto its source. I had to figure out why in the world am I crying just because somebody is singing a song. Why in the world is my heart pounding like it is? All because the glory of God has walked into place and it draw me nearer to I had to say, God, what is it that's calling me? In this place. Yeah. Yes, Lord. It wasn't an audible sound, Sister Tony. It was in my heart. Uh -huh. Calling me. Yeah, yeah. To his presence. Right. Moses was being called. To his presence. Mm -hmm. While he's having the conversation with God the Father. And it's important to me to always point out. Because anytime God asks you to do something. Mm -hmm. Don't you feel inadequate for what God is asking you to do. Yes. Don't you feel like, God, I, I, I'm not even capable of doing what you're asking me to do. I'm, I'm just a, a, a wretch undone. Yes. Yes. Well, why are you asking someone as low as me? Well. You can use anybody you choose to use. But you ask me. Mm -hmm. Don't you feel that sense of, of, of humbleness? Lord, why are you choosing me? And we want to be able to understand that it doesn't matter if God chose you to be up on this side of the pulpit, on that side of the pulpit. Your assignment is still precious unto the Lord. Yes, that's right. You still have a charge to carry. Yes. And I still feel humbled by whatever God asked me to do. Moses felt humbled. God, why would you choose me? I cannot perform such a task by myself. I'm going to need some help mm -hmm. if you expect me to do this thing that you're asking me to do. Lord, I need some help. Because folks are going to ask me, who in the world mm -hmm. do you think you are? Well, well. You know what's coming. Who in the world do you think you are? Mm -hmm. You ever try to minister uh, to a family member who still sees you as just Tony? Well, well. They still see you as just Rita. Yeah. You still just Michelle. Yeah, yeah. They don't see the word of God that you carry in your heart. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to give you a message that the Lord told me to tell you, but all you see is Jerry D. I'm going to need some help, Lord. By whose authority am I going to be coming to try to free these children of Israel? They're going to ask me, uh, what's your name? This posing question that, that, that Moses has here 
is really, Lord, I need you to reveal yourself mm -hmm. unto me. Tell them, just tell them I am has sent you. Well. I am has sent you. I am Jehovah. Yeah. Tell them that Jehovah, the God who fulfills his promises, mm -hmm. has sent you. Mm -hmm. I got you there. You have Christ asking his disciples. Well. Now, who do men say that I am? Now, we done had a, a, a transfer of time here. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. We've been able to see God's glory time and time again. Well. And the question is, now, who do men say that I am? I want us to pay a, a close attention because there's going to be a, a, a dash on your headstone. Well, you was born on such and such a date and you passed on such and such a date. Mm -hmm. And there's a, 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 a line that shows from there to there. Yeah, yeah. Where God is saying, what did you do from this start to that finish? Yeah. What did you do in your dash yeah, yeah. while you was here? Yeah. You mean to tell me in this dash, mm -hmm. y'all still don't know who God is well, well. in between your dash? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Christ asking, well, who do people say that the Son of Man is? Mm -hmm. And I tried to dig, Sister Rita, why Jesus would call himself the son of man mm -hmm. when he's God in the flesh. Well, Humbleness yeah. all over again. Yeah. Humbleness is saying the work I'm doing is to bring light to my father and not to myself. Yeah, yeah. I ain't trying to make my I ain't trying to promote myself. I'm trying to promote my father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he is but who he said he is. Yeah. I am the son of man. Uh -huh. I am a humble follower. I am meek and lowly that I might bring honor to my father. Some folks are never going to see past your past. All right. right. You are always going to be that little person that was running down the street. You are always going to be uh, that person uh, with the Jerry Curl, well. with the loud music. You always going to be that person. They're never going to see past your past. Well. Some folks will never see Moses as a deliverer. He'll always be just a baby that was drawn out of the Nile. Some folks will never see Peter as a rock. He'll always be that man who likes to cuss folks out and speak out of turn. Yeah. Some folks would never see Jesus as anything more than the carpenter's son. Mm -hmm. He's asking him, now who do people say that I am? Mm -hmm. who, 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 who is man saying that I am? Coming up with all these, all these folks some say you're, you're John the Baptist mm -hmm. coming back from the dead. Some folks say you're just one of the prophets. Some folks say you're Elijah. Some folks say you're just the carpenter's boy. Mm -hmm. God asked him, well, who, do, who do you say that I am? Sister Michelle, who, who, do, who do you say that I am? Yeah, yeah. What I like about it is he can ask us all the same question and we can all give him a different answer. That's right. Because he's going to be something different uh, to each one of us. Yeah. Uh, but when you bottle it all up, mm -hmm. he's just going to be Jesus yeah. and Jesus all by himself. What have I shown you 
uh, that when you describe me, that's what you're going to tell people that I am. Who are you going to say that I am when you get amongst your friends mm -hmm. and y'all standing in the room? Yeah. How are you going to uh, uh, illuminate who I am in your life yeah. amongst your friends? How are you going to let your little light shine in the community that's going to tell somebody who I am in your circle? Peter says, I need to speak for the group. Yes. Uh, we ain't going to have us a census, but I believe I'm speaking for all of us. Mm -hmm. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Yes. And there is nobody quite like you. Yes. Uh, and if I could throw my own stuff on the inside. Thou art Jesus the Christ. Mm -hmm. Thou art the lily of the valley. Yes, yes. You are my bright and my morning star. Yes, You're my beginning and my end. Yes, right You're the source and the finish yes, yes. of all that I have. Yes, yes. You are why I came to church yes. this Sunday yes. afternoon. Yes, and you're why I'll sing a song. You're why, Lord that I got in the blue car and rolled down the street. You're why I'm happy when I should be crying. You're my joy and my salvation. You're my all and my all. You're my bread of life. You are my creator and you are my almighty God. You are my prince of peace and my king of kings. You're my lord of lords and the light of my salvation. You're my all and my all. Yes. And you're the reason why I have my being. Yes. You are the Christ, my Lord. Yes. And you are yes. my Savior. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Christ says, Blessed thou art. Mm -hmm. Because flesh and blood had told you that. You found that out uh, because when you didn't have food to eat, you know I fed you. That's right. You found that out because when you were sick, you know I was the one that healed your body. Yes. You found that out because when you wasn't in your right mind, I was the one that kept you. Yeah. You didn't read this in a book. Yeah. You found it out because when you was walking with me, you found out when things got too low, I was the one that carried you yes. on your heels and your valleys. Yes. Yes. Look at Christ respond. To Peter, he tells Peter, Peter, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. Jesus tells Peter, uh, blessed are you. First he calls him blessed. And then he reminds him of where he came from. Yeah. I like that. All right. You are blessed, but let me remind you where you came from. Right. You ain't always lived in a nice house. Well. You ain't always had money in your pocket. But blessed are you yes. because I am speaking blessings right. upon you. Yes, because your start ain't going to look like your end. Right, yes. Where you started out is not going to look like how you ended. Yeah, yeah. You might have started broke and broken, but you ain't going to end broken. Yeah. You might have started out a wretch undone, yeah. but you ain't going to end yeah. a wretch undone. Yeah. You might have started out a sinner, but you ain't going to end a sinner. Right. You will be blessed and highly favored yeah. because of our relationship yes, that we had. Right. Yeah. Ain't you glad uh, that your beginning don't look like your end. Yes, Lord. Uh, that that stash in between my time uh -huh. was filled with me just loving the Lord yes. in all his splendor. Yes. I know that my beginning doesn't look like my end. Yes. 
that I can proclaim that you ain't seen nothing yet. God is just beginning a work. God is just starting out getting ready to get this thing going. God is moving on my behalf and my beginning doesn't look like my end. I'm so happy when I can shout and say, Lord, thank you that my start don't look like my finish. My beginning is a whole lot better than what the end is going to be because God has something in store for me on the back side that he was preparing me for on my front side. I had a conversation with a lady this morning having relationship troubles. Mm -hmm. And I shared with her, I said a relationship is like a cake. Mm -hmm. And in order for a relationship to grow, you have to grow it by having layers on yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It don't just become great overnight. Well, you got to build on it. So you got to have the right foundation and then start putting layers yeah. on top of it. And even if a person's been married 50 years, they are still baking their cake. Right. The cake ain't finished until one of them gets called on home. So you just got to keep on working on the relationship until the relationship matures. And it's just the same way with Christ Jesus. If you want to have a right relationship, I'm going to have to keep on working yeah. and keep on baking right. on that relationship. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to have to have a firm foundation of Jesus Christ. I'm going to have to add a little bit of the Holy Spirit into my mix. I'm going to have to sprinkle some holiness all through this thing. I'm going to have to have some justification in this bad boy. And I'm going to have to keep on working on it until it is good. And it don't get good. It does, the temperature light don't ding and say the cake is done until Christ calls you home. Yes, yes. We just keep on working on it. Yes, so I ask the question, what do you know about Jesus? Mm -hmm. Be prepared to give account mm -hmm. to the Lord. Lord, I can tell you who you are yes, and who you are in my life. Mm -hmm. And thank God that it has been revealed unto me because we have the right relationship yes. Yes. with one another. Yes. Amen. So God so loved the world that he gave yes. his only begotten son. Yes. The word believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. I want to um, just remind us to continue to live.